All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I wanted to do a versus video between my RTX 4090 and RX 7900 XDX in God of War Ragnarok paired with the Ryzen 7800X 3D. All my hardware will be linked in the description below. We're going to focus on 4K native. We'll check out DLSS and FSR quality and balance. And we'll also take a look at some frame generation as well. So let's not waste any time and dive straight into it. We're going to start with native 4K, TAA, and the ultra graphical preset. Then we're going to work our way down to DLSS FSR quality and then balance. We're going to put up our 7900XX footage on the left and the 49 footage on the right. Now, my methodology, the way I do this, for those of you who may not know, is actually play the same area of the game, about 5 to 10 minutes worth of gameplay, and then we compare averages and 1% lows and come up with a percentage difference between the two. That's basically it. For this particular video, though, I wanted to wait until you enter the... Uh, open world area because the game becomes a little bit more demanding. It's not that much more demanding than the very beginning area, but it is just a little bit. And if we were to compare the differences between these two GPUs at native 4K with the ultra graphical preset, we have 88 FPS average on the 7900XTX and 107 FPS average on the RTX 4090. That's a 22% advantage in average FPS for the RTX 4090. And for 1% lows, we have 76 FPS on the 7900XTX versus 88 FPS on the 4090. That's a 16% advantage for the RTX 4090. So not a huge difference, uh, but the XTX is a bit faster than it usually is, but that's really hardly a surprise with the Sony games that tend to do pretty well on AMD GPUs. And that's fine, actually. Now, other differences that uh, stand out, well, um, the 4090 is a bit more power efficient, although I have manually overclocked both GPUs, uh, to be fair. And there's VRAM differences. Uh, the AMD GPU is consuming about, um, I don't know, like one, one to two gigabytes more VRAM. Uh, nothing too crazy, but yeah, those are the differences that stand out the most. But other than that, this is a pretty nice gaming experience at uh, native 4K. If you have a uh, like 120 hertz uh, OLED display, which is what I'm using, it looks absolutely fantastic. So 4K native is actually really good on both, like I said. I think this is a good opportunity to check out frame generation. And there is something about that, actually, because I did test out DLSS frame generation, and it's actually currently broken. When you turn it on, nothing happens. But FSR frame generation works. I tested it on the 4090. Although the gains weren't really that uh, great. We gained a little bit more, but I got a lot more FPS just turning DLSS quality than using FSR. Uh, but this will give us a good chance to see how FSR frame generation runs on the 7900XDX. Because I have actually noticed that the AMD GPUs can generate uh, more frames with FSR frame generation than their NVIDIA counterpart in many cases. But keep in mind that we're getting 92 FPS on the XTX and 114 FPS on the 4090 in this particular scene. And we're going to go ahead and turn frame generation FSR on both GPUs. And now the 7900 XTX is practically caught up to the 4090 with FSR frame generation. Pretty interesting. But let's compare the amount of frames gained for each GPU. Let's take a look at the 4090 first. We had 114 FPS in that scene, and then when we turned FSR frame generation, we went up to 144 FPS. That's a gain of 30 FPS, which amounts to 25%. If we were to look at the 7900 XTX though, we were at 92 FPS in that particular scene, and when we turn FSR frame generation, went up to 146 FPS. That was a gain of 54 FPS, which equals to 60%. So 25% gain in FPS in the 4090 and 60% on the XDX. So yeah, I mean, uh, we definitely got a lot more frames out of FSR frame generation on the AMD GPU than the Nvidia one, which is uh, kind of interesting, but I'm not really that surprised. It's a case by case basis though. 
But anyway, if we were to compare average FPS, we had 140 on the XDX with FSR frame generation and 133 on the 4090. So the XDX is a little higher, but within margin of error. And 1% lows, 115 on the XDX and 111 on the 4090. Again, within margin of error. Uh, so yeah, this was kind of interesting uh, in regards to FSR frame generation. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at DLSS and FSR quality. All right, so before we try DLSS and FSR quality, I went back and turned frame generation off so we get an idea of the amount of uh, performance we gain. Uh, we're at 96 FPS on the XTX and 115, 114 FPS on the RTX 4090. So let's go ahead and uh, turn on DLSS and FSR frame generation. And we jump up to 136 FPS on the 7900 XTX and 163, 164 FPS on the RTX 4090. So that's a pretty nice jump in uh, in performance for both GPUs, actually, which is uh, nice to see. Now, the DLSS quality and FSR quality uh, part of the gameplay was actually my longest. I think I captured about like 10 or 15 minutes worth of gameplay, but obviously we're going to cut that short. Uh, but anyway, if we were to compare averages and 1% lows at the end of my run, we got 120 FPS average on the 7900 XTX and 153 FPS average on the RTX 4090 for a 25% lead for the RTX 4090 on average FPS. And then for 1% lows, we had a pretty nice and solid 92 FPS for the 7900 XTX versus 109 FPS for the RTX 4090. That is a 19% advantage for the 1% lows on the RTX 4090. So again, it's about similar numbers to what we were getting with uh, uh, native 4K with uh, TAA. Now, here's a thing uh, that I forgot to mention during the uh, FSR frame generation part. So FSR 3.1 implementation in this game is done the right way because frame generation is actually decoupled from uh, FSR upscale. So if you're an RTX 2000, 2000 user and you want to use DLSS upscaling with FSR 3 frame generation, you can actually do that. And to be fair, even RTX 4000 users will have to do that because uh, DLSS frame generation is apparently broken in the game. When you toggle it on, nothing happens. Uh, but Either way, I think uh, FSR frame generation does a pretty good job. Now, unfortunately for me, I can't really, um, I don't really see an advantage to using it because I'm using a 4K 120Hz display anyway. So I I'm, I'm already pretty close to that at 4K with uh, my uh, 4090. So it really wouldn't make a lot of sense. I would rather just use DLSS or FSR quality, if I'm being honest, and get a bunch of real frames and then maybe cap the, the frame this rate to 120. Promising. That's right? how I've been playing the game. Like but uh, anyway, this is a pretty good idea. We get Please solid performance overall. Um, well, let's go ahead and take a look at DLSS him. balance and then uh, we'll wrap up the video. Let's check it out. None taken. Alright, so here we go. We're at 109 FPS on the 7900 XTX and 135 FPS on the RTX 4090. Let's go ahead and drop to FSR and DLSS balance. Now, when I tested this on the 4090, I actually didn't really get much more FPS at all. And uh, yeah, that seems to be the case here too. Uh, we were at, what, 92 FPS on the 7900 XTX and we went up to 110 on the 4090, we're at 145 FPS from 130 something. Uh, so yeah, not a massive gain uh, jumping from uh, or dropping from quality to balance. Now, I don't know if this is because maybe a CPU limitation. It can't be really because the 7900 XTX is definitely maxed out and the 4090 appears to be as well. Uh, but now that we enter some of these areas, like with the water, there's a lot less assets and foliage and heavier to render areas around so you're going to jump up in fps that is quite normal but this extra run i played for about uh five to ten minutes uh still and if we compare averages and one percent lows between the two we averaged 165 fps on the 7900 xtx and 204 fps average on the 4090 that's a lead of 24 percent 
on the 4090 for the average. It's right up there with what we've been seeing, 25% or so. And for 1% lows, we had 107 FPS on the 7900 XTX and 126 FPS on the RTX 4090 for a lead of 18% on the for the RTX 4090 so again very similar to what we had before now the reason why the average FPS was so much higher is because well in this next part it's um it's like a cutscene that's indoors so the FPS goes way up because it's a lot less demanding but uh yeah this is my results uh I was gonna do a separate video for the 7900 XTX but I figured why not compare it to the 4090 because I mean, the XTX results are really, really good. Uh, if you compare the prices between the two GPUs, uh, uh, it's a huge, massive difference. Um, you know, although the 4090 has other things that um, it's not just uh, rasterized performance or better efficiency. You know, you have the ray tracing DLSS and all that stuff. But anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, the point of the video is to compare the two in God of War Ragnarok. And here it is, guys. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And... Uh, Consider subscribing if you like my content. I make videos like this and other type of stuff that I find interesting. That's pretty much uh, what I do. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you watching. And if I might add, actually, because I forgot to mention it, uh, I think both DLSS and FSR actually look really good in, in this game. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know below. But anyway, thanks again. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.